Hey, welcome back. Today's agenda, we're going to put some holes in this guitar body for pickups, volume and tone controls, switches, we're going to locate the bridge, get those posts drilled in, etc, etc. Maybe do some body shaping, I don't know. We'll just see what we stumble into and what we have time for. Stick around, let's see what happens. enough. Well today we're going to do one of those exercises that makes me pucker a little bit. One of those things where it can all go horribly wrong or all go horribly right. We're going to locate our bridge. We're going to locate our pickups, our controls, and by locate I mean make some holes. First thing we're going to do, so I've got my fixture for humbuckers. I've made a few of these throughout the years. I've bought some of the plexiglass ones. If you buy them online, just know that they really aren't made for routing. Uh, I kind of learned that the hard way. I figured you could just slap them down and go at it with a router. Didn't seem to work for me, buddy, really. Didn't seem to work for me, um, you know, it just melted them. Uh, or rather, I managed to cut maybe one opening and then the next one, it, the router bit was hot, so the bearings started wearing away on the plexiglass and uh, that's how you end up with a guitar like this behind me, that's, um, which if Leonard wasn't in the way, you could see it, which uh, turns into kind of a test mule with great big pickup rings so uh, got to be aware of stuff like that what I did here is I used one of my plexiglass uh, templates that I kind of fixed just to make this shape and then I drilled a bunch of holes in it put it on my uh, my little reciprocating saw and um, just cut her out we've got our template screwed to the top of the guitar. Um, these screw holes will line up with the holes in the pick guard, which I hear it is, I'm sorry, with the pickup ring. So we'll end up using them ultimately. So let's pre-drill a starter hole and uh, get to beaver in this wood out. Success. We have the pickup holes routed into it as you can see. I do have a little bit of cleanup to do but I'll do that a little bit later. Had some chipping around the openings. Not a big deal. The trim rings are going to cover it. Just something to be aware of when you're doing this. I wonder if maybe a guy had gone in and scored it with a razor knife or something. Um, 
around the opening in the fixture, maybe it wouldn't have, have, have uh, any chipping. Again, not a big deal. Fortunately, it didn't chip out far enough that it'll be seen. So I have my bridge location laid out. I put my neck on it, measured my scale length, centered the bridge on the seam in the body, marked out where my posts are going to go. I have my uh, control locations, uh, volume and tone. I'm only going to use a volume and tone on this one. Uh, Three-way switch and my location for the uh, plug-in, the jack. So I've got my pilot holes drilled. Always want to drill a pilot hole because that's going to help you control splitting. It's going to help you positively locate where you really need to be. In addition, you always want to start in reverse. I've gone through and I've I've measured all my uh, parts that I'm going to be installing. I have one of these little hole gauge things. Seems to work pretty good. Couldn't even tell you where I got it. I'm, I'm sure every, everybody has one. Uh, found my corresponding drill bits. <laughs> Interestingly enough, the one I need for my posts is, uh, looks like I've sharpened that a few thousand times. Uh, I think it's, I'm due for some new drill bits. Apparently I don't use this size or I would have noticed that. But anyway, that'll work just fine. I only need to go in a little ways. The controls, the switch, that stuff I can drill by hand. The post for my bridge, I'm going to start that out by hand, but ultimately finish it on the drill press because it's really important that those holes are uh, square, straight, all that stuff so your bridge doesn't lean one way or the other. Uh, that's going to cause you problems if that happens. holes here I'm going to leave them the way they are and I'll show you later why that is. We have our bridge. Some of you may have noticed uh, in previous episodes when I've shown some other guitars I've built that my jack is what you would call in the upside down position. And the reason I do that is because it just makes more sense to me that you would run your cord up over your strap and then plug straight in versus you know a lot of guitars, less balls for example would have your plug in this location so now you've got a loop you're going up over your strap when I was playing a lot playing in live situations it always seemed like if you were gonna have a chord failure it was gonna be in this section where you're doing the double bend at the end whatever it just seemed like we were always fixing chords always having chord issues um, if you don't loop it up over your strap you just plug it straight in then you step on it now you've unplugged it uh, just a lot of flaws with with the plug-in on the bottom in my mind so that's why I do what I do there okay so we got all our holes in here moving forward we're gonna do some sanding get this thing down to 400 grit I won't ask you guys to sit through yet another sanding montage so I'll do that off camera when we come back rejoin uh, I'm hoping to have this thing ready to do final stain, glue the neck in. That'll probably be our next steps. Once we're at that point, we're perilously close to shooting clear coat on this thing and doing the final assembly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're closer than you may think at this point. 
if you've hung on this long through this episode and you haven't subscribed yet, feel free. Uh, you know, this is pretty typical of what we do. Uh, previous episodes, you know, we've done some work on acoustic guitars. We've made some uh, homemade tools, demonstrated how those work, things like that. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, feel free to check it out. Um, Till next time, I guess we'll see you later. Bye.